Ross is also a great tradition in rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one. Remind me never to go to Bogbert. <laughs> Loud red. Every summer, the most depressing every place summer we life. eat a lot of uh, reindeer moss. Reindeer moss yes. and rock. We have a reindeer moss festival. <laughs> <laughs> this is a reindeer moss the fellas have collected. It's a lichen, and I have to admit, it doesn't look very appetising. But in a survival situation, this contains carbohydrate. And if it's a choice between starving to death or eating this, well, the choice is clear. Now, the thing about this moss is it contains a lot of acid and uh, also holds twigs and grit. And we need to clean the twigs and grit out, and we need to find a way of neutralising the acid. Now, I've got a couple of choices. And if I was stuck here in a survival situation, what I would do is I'd take ash from the fire and I'd boil that down until I get a strong alkali solution, which I can then add to this as I clean it, which helps to neutralise it. But that takes a lot of work, and uh, more importantly, I'd have to destroy the guy's fire here, and I'm sure they wouldn't be too happy about that. Instead, I'm going to use this bicarbonate of soda, which does exactly the same job. And um, I'm just going to sprinkle some of that in there with that and give it a soaking in that. Uh, liquid there. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this on the stove and boil that for five, ten minutes in this bicarbonate solution. And then I'll take it off, drain it, put fresh water in, and do the same again. Then I'll drain that again and then just cover it with enough water to cover the lichen and give it a long, slow simmer until it starts to turn gelatinous. And that'll be it done. This is exactly the process the original team used to make the moss edible. But how well does it work? All right, well, here we are. Ah, <laughs> reindeer moss. Lovely. Get it down. Mm. Yep. That's disgusting. I oh, know. It tastes. It's very acidic. It reminds me of seaweed uh, with a lot of grit in it. What think, do you think can be done to improve it? Um. <laughs> it may be disgusting, but there's a purpose to all this, and that's to find out how hard surviving up here would have been back in the war years. For the original Grouse team, there was more than their own personal survival at stake. There was the whole operation, which although they hadn't been told, was to sabotage Hitler's atomic bomb research. During one of the harshest winters on record, they actually were reduced to eating reindeer moss and anything else they could scavenge from the land. Morning, men. It's extremely difficult to live off the land up at Svensbu. They're on uh, limited rations, and to do that would have taken you know, an extreme amount of effort. To go out and check the snares every day, to check their uh, fishing lines every day, would have been particularly hard, and it would have had a detrimental effect on you over a period of time. It was a valuable lesson. We learnt it very rapidly, that uh, you need to look on your doorstep as opposed to, uh, you know, casting your net too far. As if to prove the point, on their last evening, Adam and Jason catch a ptarmigan in one of the traps near to the hut. You happy now? Oh, yes. Happy with that. Right. It just goes to show, if you put the effort in, put enough uh, snares out eventually, it all pays off. It's not much, but frankly I don't think that they expected to catch anything in four days. But even though the original grouse team was to be here for three months, our team has given me a real insight into just how hard it must have been for them 60 years ago. The grouse in the pan there with a small amount of butter and a few spices that we've managed to find in the hut. And that's what's in that pan there. What I will try to tell my children is uh, not uh, the details, but uh, their spirit to never give up and keep going and uh, complete their missions.
I know myself and Adam were aware of the story, but not of all the, the sort of individual bits and pieces that went on. And um, to that end, it's been um, it's been quite amazing to actually discover what they've done. Um, some of it at, at first hand, because we've covered some of the ground that they've done. After four days hauling kit across the plateau on minimal rations, all four men had lost over four kilos in weight. Now, after a further four days scavenging for food at Svensbu, there are further surprises in store. Okay, Jason, you are 73 kilos. So you've lost, in total, six kilos. Um, it's quite a shock, really. I didn't think I had too much to lose. I'm not saying I wasn't fat, but six kilos is quite a lot for somebody of my size. 82 kilos, so you've lost six in total. No, it's normal. I have still some reserve here. <laughs> you are 88 kilos, so you've lost nine kilos in weight. That's, uh, that's quite a shocking amount of weight, really, because we've only been out here for eight days in total. And to lose nine kilos in eight days, I think I might sell it uh, to the general public as the uh, Sven's Boo weight loss programme. So, yeah, it's a pretty shocking amount of weight to lose. What does it tell you? Um, it tells me that in eight days I've lost six kilos. In uh, a few months, Grouse must have been struggling massively to do what they did. And, and the, to be honest, there couldn't have been much left of them at the end of this. During November and December 1942, Grouse's ability to survive was quite amazing, but merely staying alive wasn't enough. The sabotage party was expected to join them at the end of December, and they desperately needed a significant source of food to build themselves up for the raid on the heavy water factory. On Christmas Eve, their luck suddenly changed as a herd of migrating reindeer passed close to the hut. The day before Christmas, when I went out and was able to shoot the first reindeer, it was very, very important. We needed that meat. Here in the north, every part of the reindeer has its uses. There are sinews for thread, skins for clothing, and of course meat for food. You'd be surprised how much of the carcass can actually be eaten. Huge sack full of food. Today, most people look at an animal like this in terms of steaks and joints, but in a survival situation, nothing can go to waste. There are obvious things in here. We've got the liver, which I'll cut out in a minute and just check and look for any signs of infection, any marbling or any white spots on the liver to see if it's healthy or not. One of the most important parts of the reindeer for the survivors was the contents of here. This is the, the food sack within the animal. And in here, we've got the remains of the reindeer moss that they were eating. They are able to digest reindeer moss where it's difficult for us. And although it's an unappealing source of food, for just about every indigenous population across the northern forests, the northern part of the world, the stomach contents were, at one point in their history, an important source of food. Because in here, we gain carbohydrate and we gain vitamins. If I open this up now, it would be pretty disgusting mess inside there, a horrible green mess, rather pongy to the nose. But if you let it freeze, which is exactly what the soldiers on this operation did, you can then slice it off and add it to a stew, which adds thickening and brings a vegetable content to the meal, which is really important for nutrition. They knew this because they'd all read books by this man, the Norwegian explorer Helge Ingstad. Like me, he was a firm believer in learning survival skills from indigenous people. He spent four years as a trapper in, in Canada, living with the caribou people who lived only on reindeer. And I knew most of what he had written by heart. They used to mix uh, reindeer moss in between uh, with them. Um, brain, with blood, etc., etc., to get vitamins. So we tried the same. And um, it wasn't uh, a dish I would um, um, 